Hi, welcome back to Game Programming with Unity. This is Nicholas Bernhard Zeman, and what I want to show you now is how to get things in your game to react when physics is engaged. Uh, and the very first thing, and this is very common in games and in interactive media development uh, projects, is that when I move into a certain spot, I want a certain thing to happen. So how does the game know when my character has moved into a certain spot or reacted or, or hit an object? All right, well, we have a couple things that we can use inside of Unity that are very, very important called on trigger enter and on uh, collision enter. Right now, I'm going to show you tri what triggers are and how they work. So a trigger works a lot like a collider. It is a collider, but instead of actually creating a barrier, it just sends out a message saying, hey, I've been uh, moved through. My volume has been intersected or penetrated. So what I'm going to do here is just create. Let's create a game object, and we're going to create an empty. Why? Because we don't need anything but a nothing. All we need is a transform node. And I'm going to call this my trigger. All right now, what I'm going to do is create a collider here. So let's create a box collider. And we can edit some of those parameters. Right, I'm just going to create a space through which my character will pass. It's a volume. And it could be a sphere, it could be anything. I, I usually use boxes just to show off the uh, capabilities of on trigger enter. Okay, now how do we know what object is what? That's the thing, because if we said on trigger enter of anything, and we'll get to the scripting in just a second, if we say if anything passes through this volume, and I send out a reaction, then any other physics object, anything, any lasers, any, anything I've got going on in the game are going to set that off. So what I want to do is specify only this type of object. I want to say this is a type of object, and only when this type of object passes into the trigger zone do I want this other thing to happen. And in order to do that, we create what are called tags. So every game object can have a tag. And you can see over here we have this little tag button. So I'm going to select the object that's going to be interpenetrating and then choose under from tag player. And that's one that's already in there for you. Uh, you know, we always need to know when the player does something or when it interacts with another object. So I've selected my player and I've given him the tag of player. That's the first thing to do. Okay, let's go back to my trigger here. First of all, let's make sure we know it's a trigger, right? This is trigger button. That means it's not going to impede my character's progress, but it is going to register when my character moves across it based on some code I'm going to write. Okay, so now I've got this script here called trigger light. Now I'm going to trigger an action based on the inner penetration of that trigger volume from my character. So I'm going to drag this trigger light up to my trigger. And I'm asking it for a variable which is the spotlight and I've created a spotlight here and you can go along with this uh, from this lesson 506 in Unity. I'm going to just drag my spotlight over this. Now I have a spotlight that doesn't have any intensity on it yet. I'm going to change the intensity of the spotlight based on the character moving across the trigger uh, volume. So let's look here and I'm just going to show you my code. And once again this is we're learning some new stuff here, and physics gets pretty deep and complex, so we're going to go over this bit by bit. What's happening? All right, first of all, we have our public light spot that I created as a variable. The reason I have that is so I can have something happen when that trigger gets entered. Okay. Now, in this case, this script is pretty specific. Uh, we're not doing anything in starter update. What we are doing is this new thing called on trigger enter. Now, this is a really important piece of code, so let's... I'm going to separate this out here. This runs to kind of like update all the time. So if you've got physics engaged, if you've got a collider, then it's always looking for collisions. And a trigger is a type of collider. So this is physics code checking for trigger collisions. That means that it's always looking for somebody else to collide with it, right? So I, anytime anything collides with it, there's information I can get. So here's what the method says. On trigger enter, when a trigger has been entered that's attached to this object. So this only happens to 
the object it's attached to, and it's actually a subset of the, of the collider class, or collision if you're using collision enter. All right, so what it says is on trigger enter. When something passes into this volume, right, and I'm giving it an argument called a collider thing, this means anything passing into this, immediately this runs and says, okay, there's a thing, there's an object, or a collider type of uh, Unity object or, or Unity class, and I'm naming this thing. So collider, this is the code that always must be in the uh, on trigger enter. You must denote it as a type, a collider, right? And that collider we've seen, we have rigid bodies of colliders as Unity types. All right, thing. Now I'm calling it thing. Uh, some people call it collider, lowercase. It's really confusing, but you'll see that a lot. Collider, collider, or collider, collision. That gets incredibly um, confusing. So I call it thing. It means anything. I just call it a thing. Some thing, right, has entered into the volume of this object. And we know it has a collider because it can't register as penetrating a volume without that collider component. So now I've got some other code. And it says if thing, and thing is whatever just collided with our object that this script is attached to if thing dot game object dot tag now remember i just said that that tag is a property now we can call it out by saying thing which is a collider dot game object that means the game object that this thing is attached to and then we say dot tag that means the tag value or tag variable of um this game object and i say if it equals we have equals equals part of our logic system if it equals and here's a string. It has to equal a string because tags are based on strings. And it equals player. That means if the game object interpenetrating this trigger has a tag with the uh, string player in it, so if I've assigned a player tag to anything, um, it will register as it's penetrating across this and it will execute this code. So I'm just going to write here as a comment if the tag of the penetrating object is player and then it says do this code spot dot intensity equals 10 that means that the spotlight i'm going to change the intensity as a one time piece of code to 10 that means the spotlight is going to suddenly turn on when that character crosses into that um, trigger all right so i'm just going to build that and we can see the behavior. Play the game. All right, it's pretty dark, right? I turned the lights down so we can see this dramatic effect. Boom, as soon as he crosses into that volume, that spotlight goes on. So you can see how we could use this for all kinds of different elements in a game where we can have things happen based on where the player is. Now, there are a couple other things we're gonna look at here. We have on trigger enter. We also have something called on trigger leave. And it's an entirely different method we have to call out. So I say void on trigger leave collider thing. We always use that collider thing. And I'm going to copy and paste this code. Control C, Control V. But I'm going to change that spot intensity to zero. That means if something leaving that volume, once an object leaves a volume, let's turn that spotlight off. It's the exact same thing, except instead of when it's penetrated, when it ceases to be penetrated by the thing, and if that thing object is player. So now that spotlight turns on, and the spotlight does not turn off. And I'm betting. I personally have a tendency to say leave and it is exit. Yeah, there we go. I have a tendency to, to somehow get my brain crossed with leave and exit. It's the same thing uh, in terms of conceptually, but in terms of calling up a function, you must have the exact right uh, spelling of that or the exact the exact correct function that's been called so boom he enters the volume and bam exits the volume 
So when he exits, the light turns off. When he enters, the light turns on. Now, any of you who play games, and I'm sure a lot of you do, can remember multiple times when this kind of stuff happens. You walk into a space and it says, oh, something's happening. A light turns on, a, a creature attacks, or an AI decides that you're the target, and then you walk out of that space, and suddenly, boom, you're no longer the target. The creature disappears, the light turns off. And so this is a, how these games do this, is that they define a volume upon which you enter, and then certain things happen while you're inside of that volume. Now there's one thing left, and it's also a very important function. It's void on trigger stay. Works the same way, but it constantly evaluates while you are inside that volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my spot intensity to 1, just so we can see this effect happen. I'm going to copy this code and paste it. So remember, this is an ongoing thing, kind of like update. So anything we do in here, I'm going to say plus equals 1. What is that going to do? That means while we're inside that volume, it's going to constantly return true, right? Uh, this value is going to constantly return true, and while we're there, the spot intensity will go up by 1 for every time this is evaluated. So let's I don't see that spotlight changing value. It might evaluate it pretty fast. Let's just see if we can turn that down a little bit. I change that to point 0.1. It may be evaluating a little bit so so fast that we can't really see the change. There we go. You see how it's turning on slowly? It's that that physics engine is evaluating so fast that we almost want to turn it down a little bit more. Now it's going to take much longer because I'm changing that value to point 0.01. We can see what's happening. As he's in that volume, that light's slowly going to get brighter until it reaches 8, which I think is the maximum brightness. So that intensity slowly gets brighter as he steps in. Now, could I have that slowly turn off as he leaves? Well, not using the, the leave, because the leave only evaluates immediately one time. It doesn't cons consistently evaluate. Now I can start what's called a coroutine, which could constantly turn the light down after he leaves. I could trigger that with him leaving, uh, just as I could trigger it with him walking in to the volume. But this is just kind of a good example of how we can use those on trigger enter, on trigger exit, and on trigger stay to control aspects of our game. Now, when we come back, we're going to learn a little bit about the other side of this, which is on collision. So I'm going to separate that out just so we can get a good feel for the difference between an object that is a trigger, which is this trigger object, and I have trigger on. That means it doesn't impede your uh, movement, and it's not a collision. Another thing that we need to understand is that any trigger uh, code needs to go on the object that is the trigger. So if I say on trigger enter, I mean this object that I've attached this script to is this trigger being penetrated, or is something staying in it, or is something leaving it? So the script has to be on the trigger object itself. All right, so this scene will be saved out here as Lesson 506 Unity if you want to look at the materials so you can just get a better idea how all this stuff is set up.